I pre-ordered the Onefinity when it came out. It came with the 65 millimeter Makita router on it, and I've had good luck with the router itself. But as for the collet, I have all kinds of trouble getting the bit out of there. For some reason, it just locks in there. I think it was an omen. I was watching a video of Jeff at Two Moose Design, and he was changing out the Onefinity router to a spindle. Then about 10 minutes later, I went to do a bit change, and I could not get the bit out. So I had a water-cooled 1.5 kilowatt, 65 millimeter spindle parked in my Amazon cart for a while. So I just went ahead and ordered that. I made sure to get one with everything I needed. It had the water lines, the wires and stuff. Although, admittedly, the wire that came with it was only three feet long, so I ordered another wire and then cut the wires and soldered them back together so that I could get a longer length. Here I am setting the VFD up. I just kind of searched YouTube for the same controller I had and found a video from Roger Webb where he was hooking his up. His happened to be 220, mine was 110. So really I only made the changes there while watching the video. I'll put both those links in the video descriptions below. This process was really pretty painless. Once you had the spindle in, you can get the specs off of it and then just enter them in the VFD. It really just takes patience at that point. Here was me testing it, and to be honest, I had heard they were quieter, but this absolutely blew my mind how much quieter this actually is. Here I just kind of went through and squared off the ends of the hoses to make sure they would seat perfectly. It wasn't really needed, but it's what I did. I opened up the pump that came with it, then I went ahead and put the attachments on it. I also went ahead and wrapped it in some pipe tape to keep it from spraying out the side, which in reality it probably doesn't need that. I mean, if it spills in there, it spills in there, but it'll help the pressure. Then I modified the top of the Tupperware container I got from the Home Depot to put this in. It didn't have to be anything spectacular. I just didn't want it to make a mess. I also didn't buy any brackets for this. I had some angle iron laying around that was aluminum that I made for the top. And then on the sides, I had some steel, thin 16 gauge or so that was left over from the sawmill. And I just made a bracket out of it. Instead of screwing in the back where I've seen some others screwed in, I just used a couple of the threaded holes that had some set screws set deep inside of them and used these to attach the bracket. This bracket doesn't require a lot of weight or anything. I mean, it's just gonna be holding the drag chain, so. It doesn't have to be super duty or anything.
I could have moved my drag chain over to solve this problem, but instead I just ordered some extra links for it. If you watch right here, you'll see me go to the max and it about ripped the thing off, so yeah, lesson learned. Here's where it did kind of get tricky. The fittings they sent for the pump didn't actually fit the hose they sent. So rather than try to rig it up some other way, I figured I'd just heat the end of this, shove something that's kind of conical shape inside of it to stretch it out and then stick it over the fitting. This actually worked. It was no big deal. It would have been better if it fit the first time, but it's not that big of a deal. So. Here I just took some needle nose pliers while it was hot and spread it out a little bit. This gave it enough flexibility to fit into the hose. I also found a small hose clamp that I eventually put on here after the fact. I was just worried that when I put water in it or coolant or whatever that it would blow it off the end and just make a hell of a mess. So I went down to the local auto zone and just grabbed some clamps for it. I drilled the holes in the table for the y-axis and also went back to Home Depot and got some three-quarter inch angle iron aluminum to use for the x-axis track. When I got done, I didn't like how the hoses and wire look coming out of the top, so I've used this braided cable cover before and thought this would be a great place for it. It kind of holds a rigid shape, but it's flexible enough that it won't get in a bind with the Z-Travel, so I think it'll work out pretty good here. I probably could have got a little fancier here to keep this from fraying, but I just used black electrical tape on each end, and it's fine for me. I used this RV coolant for the spindle coolant, mainly because it was a lot less harsh than some of the other coolants, and also it was four bucks at Home Depot. Here I am giving the spindle a test with the pump on, also checking out the extended X travel from where I added onto the chain. Just kind of a side note on this too, the stock suck it dust boot worked perfectly with the spindle so I didn't have to change anything out on that so that was good. Here was me doing a test prototype for an upcoming project with a 0.9 millimeter bit and this thing performed flawlessly. Not that it should have an issue, but it is super quiet too. It's crazy. After I had everything test fit, I took everything back off and gave it a nice coat of gloss black paint so that it looked sharp. I've got a list of what I use in the description. They're affiliate links, so if you need some of them, feel free to click on them and use the links. As usual, if you made it this far in the video, like and subscribe.